Hey there, Kim Stewart here with MobileWalletMarketer.com and I'm going to give you the quick walkthrough of the podcast marketing demo. And the first thing that I'm going to say is obviously we did not intend for you to see the demo as a recording, at least not originally. We do like to have a little bit of personal interaction with all of our customers and this isn't quite personal, but I'm going to do my best to make it as personal as I can. So anyway, you at this point must have some idea of what mobile wallet marketing is and how our platform works, which it works on both iPhone and Android phone. And it drops little cards or passes into either Apple Wallet or a third party Android app that manages the wallet cards. Each of these has a back and a front and on the front you've got some nifty graphics and perhaps a share barcode QR code and then on the back there is a set of what we call live links and we'll get into that shortly. Now, once these passes are in the phones, approximately 90% of them, I know that's like huge, isn't it? 90% um, of them stay on the phones. And it doesn't matter whether they're an event ticket or a coupon or a membership card or just a general mobile wallet pass. That's the figure at the moment. Now, they also have a component of location or proximity with geofencing or iBeacons as well. So I'm going to stop there and I'm going to leave it at that. Perhaps you want to speak to one of us in more detail if you're not quite sure what the passes can do. I want to move on and I want to talk about what they do specifically for podcasters and podcast marketing. Now, you may have a podcast already or you may be considering a podcast. And outside of the purely vanity podcast, which we're going to leave that alone because that doesn't have a place in our discussion, we have two real ways or two real reasons, I should say, for someone hosting a podcast. Now, we're also going to consider webinars and video marketing in this same group. So when I say podcast, I could substitute video marketing for people who do like hangouts and stuff like that on a regular basis. Or if you market via webinars on a regular basis, this also would apply to you. And the other reason that you would have a podcast is if that is one of your sort of ways that you make a living. I know several people who are podcast hosts, they are professional podcast hosts, and they generate advertising revenue by the distribution of their podcast. And one of the companies who is absolutely been in the podcasting business since day one and also has almost 20 years this year on NPR radio network is This American Life. And one of the really sort of neat statistics that we like to bring up is that Ira Glass, the host, was at South by Southwest this past March 2016 and he made the comment during an interview that they're generating more revenue from advertising sales on their podcast editions than they are currently on their radio show editions. So podcasts obviously are taking off like gangbusters right now. Um, they're kind of like the new black or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's amazing how many people have a podcast, want a podcast, and it's a really good fit for mobile wallet marketing. So there are two main reasons why people are listening to your podcast. And when I say two main reasons, I mean, why did they choose a podcast over a live radio station or why did they choose your webinar series or your podcast series over a paid course at Udemy or somewhere like that? Well, the number one reason is going to be multitasking. People listen to podcasts while they're doing other things. It doesn't require a huge amount of effort. It's sort of set it, forget it, put your earbuds in your ear and move on. The number two reason, which is the big reason, is that podcasts are free or close to it. Um, people can learn a ton of new things just by tuning in to podcast episodes and 
you can learn to do a million different things via podcast, and you can't necessarily do that with an online course. So, what is it about the podcast that has created such a giant sort of economy of scale of podcasts at the moment, and podcast hosts, and webinars, and those sort of portable shows is kind of how I would define the whole thing. Well, the podcast really was invented back in 2005 with the iPod, and it's kind of an Apple invention. Before that, you would have traveling recorded shows, for lack of a better description, but they weren't called podcasts, obviously. And <clears throat> when you look at how podcasts have grown, which has been truly exponential over the past couple of years, you had roughly 1,200 active podcasts in 2006, and you have about 60,000 of them 10 years later. Now, what determines an active podcast is a podcast that has some form of recent update activity, and recent can go as far back as even six months ago, they still updated. Now, by far and away, the larger portion of podcasts, just like blogs, just like everything else, are abandoned. So about 75% of the actual number of shows listed or series listed in the podcast directories is just over 200,000 and the actual number of actives is just about 60,000. So while it's not completely hopeless if you are trying to be a podcast host who is looking for advertising revenue, it's still potentially a big group to compete against. And Real quickly, how do you measure the success of a podcast or a webinar or a online video series? Well, you know, you could look at subscribers and in the way of like, say, YouTube channels, subscribers is kind of a decent metric, but it, it still comes back to the fact that listens is the only successful count that you can actually truly measure by. Um, take a person like me, for instance, I will listen to a podcast, I like it, and I subscribe to it, or I see a single YouTube video on a topic that I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to learn how to do this. So I subscribe to it, and then I, frankly, never go back and listen to another podcast out of the series, I never look at another episode. Um, you know, this is, it's a fairly common problem. It's the same sort of app attrition situation that we saw when we worked with the app developers a few years ago is that the churn, which is where someone comes in and initially they're there and then they just disappear, they fall off. The churn rate is absolutely horrid. And probably the most important thing that you can do with mobile wallet marketing is slow down the churn rate for your podcast or for your webinar series or for your online video marketing series or for anything you have that is repetitive where you tend to see fall off after a period of time. You know, this applies to online courses, online coaches. We have a whole other demo and a whole other podcast episode and stuff about that. So I'm just going to stick with podcasts for the moment. So anyway, what you need to know is how many people are listening. Everything is based on how many people are listening. If 50,000 people have subscribed, so to speak, to your podcast or to your video series and only five of them ever show up and watch another one, well, the number 50,000 really doesn't mean anything at all, obviously. So one of the other really cool things that you can do with your mobile wallet marketing passes while you are building your turn rate reduction for listeners or viewers or whatever you're going to call it is that you can also use these to help build your social media presence. And we like to look at all marketing as omni-channel marketing. So it kind of all hooks together. And in our view of things, the mobile wallet marketing pass is sort of that centerpiece, that hub where you can build into and build out from. 
Once you get a pass into a phone, about 90% of those passes are going to stay in the phones. So you have kind of what we consider to be a captive audience. And by putting the links on the back in a prioritized order, and remember, you can change the order of the links, you can change the links, you can change the verbiage for the links, you can make all kinds of changes to the links. That's not a big deal. So maybe I want to run some Facebook audience targeting campaigns because I'm going to run a Facebook campaign to get more people to watch my podcast. So I'm going to take my existing user base that I have with my mobile wallet marketing passes. I'm going to rearrange my passes so that social media becomes more of the focus on the back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send out an update notification and everybody who's already got the pass installed is now going to know, hey, have you followed me on Twitter? Hey, are you a fan on Facebook? Hey, are we connected on LinkedIn? Hey, are you on board with my Pinterest board? Whatever your social media flavor is of choice, this integrates almost seamlessly. The next thing I want to talk about, and I mentioned this briefly when we were talking about social media, is the automatic updates. Now, anytime you have an update to either a location or a time-sensitive update, it's going to push out directly to the lock screen. And what I have here is a screenshot of a lock screen on the iPhone. And the first one is a location-based message and the second one is a time sensitive message and the second one is actually one of our podcast updates we do some work with several different industries and this was an update that was sent to the lock screens when we had a podcast update so that's really simple in our case it's basically once a week Every 10 days when we launch a new podcast the update goes out and you can see the front of the pass and the back of the pass from the lock screen. You cannot do anything actively on the pass without unlocking the phone, but by then I already know, oh, hey, this is fabulous. So-and-so has a new podcast and it's ready and I want to listen to it. So I can either listen to it right then or it's in my head that I should listen to it. And I don't have to wait for the next time I log into iTunes to see it. So if you are ready to get started today using mobile wallet marketing, we can have you engaging your listeners, I'm going to roughly say tomorrow. And mobilewalletmarketer.com is the URL and there is a side navigation. You can go to it and you can select podcast podcast marketing platform plan and we'll get you set up. Currently, we're running a really nice special on it, and um, we'll go back to regular prices probably within the next 30 days or so. So, get on board with that. Otherwise, I'm going to continue talking about why you want to market your podcasts with mobile wallet marketing passes. I'm going to give you a really quick look at the easiest and most effective ways to do this. And we have what we call the five steps to success which is notification, churn reduction, the call to action, the ability to link to any content that you want, and the ability to launch apps directly from the back of the pass. That is exactly what I said, the ability to launch apps directly from the back of the pass. So, what happens is lock screen notifications let your listeners know that you have a new episode. This encourages them to listen in, especially to listen in now, to listen in the first chance they get. This will reduce your churn rate significantly. The links on the back of the pass are all live links and they enable you to create the most amazing calls to action. You can do click to call, click to email, click to take a survey. You can launch maps if you have a physical location. Say that you are going to do a public speaking appearance and you want all of your podcaster people in the greater Minnesota area to know about it. Well, you can set it up, send them out an update 
and send them a link with the address on it. They can pop a map and they can drive right over to where you are. Uh, you can also launch directly from the back of the pass. You can launch Stitcher, you can launch TuneIn, you can launch iTunes, YouTube, Vimeo, all of your social medias that we already talked about. If you are an app marketer, you can use your podcast to talk about your app and then you can use your mobile wallet pass to actually send people to the app store or the Google Play store to install the app from there. Super simple. So here is what I like to call the anatomy of a pass. We have the front where you have your logo, the graphic, the headline text, and then we have the back, which is where you can see the automatic updates, the lock screen, and then you see your sort of list of links and CTAs. And anything you want to put on there is fair game as long as it doesn't violate Apple's terms of service or the law where you happen to live. Um, so here, like I say, front of the pass, back of the pass, super simple. All of these lines of text are immediately updatable, easily updatable. Here are a basic list of things you might find on the back of a pass. Oh my gosh, doesn't this sound like, oh, what is that game show? Family Feud or something like that. Anyway, Number one, direct links to your podcast platforms and episodes. Number two, links to other interesting content. Number three, contests or other promotions. Use the mobile wallet marketing pass to drive interest and engagement to these type of things. You can put in links to offers for your own products, your own courses. Um, I watched a marketing campaign about a month and a half ago. One of our clients did, and she did it for a friend of hers who also has a very large um, kind of an online course, online coaching, whatever you want to call it. But they ran a sort of a dual campaign for the online course that was upcoming and um, it, it was really fantastic because she had all of the bits integrated. She had the social media, she had the email, she had all, all the different pieces were actively involved in promoting an advocate promotion. I'm, I'm going to call it that. You can have people call you directly from the back of the pass with one tap. They can email you. They can launch your social media like we already talked about. We've talked about maps. Um, almost anything that you can launch from a URL can be launched from the back of a pass. So, quick question here. Are you old enough to remember this? It's Bryant Gumbel and Katie Couric, and they are talking about email. And this was on the Today Show one morning. Um, gosh, I think it was back in 1995. Anyway, if you remember it, great. If you don't remember it, I'm going to get to it in just a second. But pay close attention to the bottom where it says, does the at symbol mean at or around? So let's take a real quick minute, talk about the ROI of mobile wallet passes. And I'm going to break it down for you. It's super easy to see how you can achieve your goals for your podcast with a little bit of help from mobile wallet marketing. You can build your user base. I have talked about reduction of churn again and again and again, and how you can encourage users to listen to more episodes more often. If you are using your podcast with sponsors, how great would it be if you could add an extra mobile wallet marketing pass that was something that reflected a sponsor or maybe you just put links to your sponsors onto the back of your mobile wallet marketing pass. Whatever it is, however you work it out, that is between you and your sponsor, but the platform does have the ability to enable those type of things. Um, the lock screen is a really subtle situation. The lock screen and wallet combination mean that it's not super duper in your face. Um, you know, it's not like a big giant advertising thing. It doesn't make bells and whistles go off. It's just sort of an unobtrusive pop-up and it goes away after a while if you don't hit it. And then if you have users that are Apple Pay aficionados, every time they go in to use their Apple Pay or they go in to set up their credit cards or whatever, 
they're going to see sort of that subliminal messaging. Same thing with the lock screen. I call that subliminal messaging. You know, it's like that popcorn thing that the movie theaters used to have going on. Um, another brilliant thing here is you don't have to wait for somebody to open an email in order to know that you have a message or an update. You don't have to wait for them to get it. You don't have to hope that it misses their spam folder, yada, yada, yada. So maximum effectiveness. I told you before that we're looking at about a 90% retention rate in the phone. Once that pass goes in there, whether it's for a trade show event ticket, whether it's a podcast marketing pass, whether it's a coupon for 25% off something at a particular restaurant or store or salon, 90% of those we find stay in the phone. And realistically speaking, this is comparable to the response rate for SMS messaging. It's about 15 times more effective than email alone. And the one thing that it does have that SMS messaging does not have is that you pay per message with SMS, you pay per month with mobile wallet marketing. So if you're sending out 500,000 update messages to your 500,000 subscribers, I can guarantee you that the cost effectiveness is so much better than sending out 500,000 SMS messages. It's insane. So the other part about the cost effectiveness is you can pay as you go by the month. We have a very reasonable monthly subscription plan, or you can opt for the annual option if you want to. There's a little bit of a discount in there if you go that route. Um, upgrade, downgrade as needed. If you are on a plan where we offer X number of updates per month and you need twice that many, come to us, tell us, we'll work something out. It's really simple. It's really easy. Most of the time, we'll just give it to you if we possibly can. So there's only one conclusion here, and that is that there is no more effective method of marketing your podcast than by using mobile wallet marketing passes. You simply cannot directly access people using their mobile phone in a manner, which is the lock screen notification that's going to be noticed but not going to generate resentment or sort of that blindness. You know, I mean, I probably get 600 emails a day and I can tell you right off, I probably don't even see 550 of them as I'm deleting them. Do you have enough listeners? I mean, really, can you ever have enough listeners? People that actually show up and listen, not just subscribe and never come back. I mean, if you do, then obviously you don't need to consider mobile wallet marketing passes and you don't need to spend any money marketing your podcast. And you know what? Mobile wallet marketing, it is probably a fad just like email. You know, this is um, why I showed you that picture of Katie and Bryant because they sat there on TV and pretty much said they really didn't understand email and that it was probably a fad. And now here we are 20 years later and oh my gosh, what's the greatest latest thing in email? Millennials have discovered email. So if you're a millennial, no offense, but everything and anything can't always be done in 140 characters or less. So last but not least, I want to tell you that right now you can take it for a test drive. Seven days, no obligation. If you don't like it, you don't pay for it. If you do like it, like I say, you can go on the monthly plan or you can go on the annual plan. The choice is yours. And we'll work with you to get a pass or passes set up that suit your needs. We'll go through how the update process works. It takes us about a business day to get you set up and running and usually less than a business day to make changes if you need changes. And if your podcast comes out on a regular schedule and you want to go ahead and send us, say, four weeks worth of updates, this is going to be my title, this is going to be the date that it comes out, then we will seamlessly integrate your updates with your new podcast releases. So anyway, talk to us. It's mobilewalletmarketer.com. I'm Kim Stewart, and this has been the Podcast Marketing Passes Not Live Demo. Thanks. Have a good day.